Hi, I am starting a non-profit UAV company and together with my team of over 40 volunteers, we have been engineering a fixed wing UAV from scratch. This UAV will be able to be used in many fields in the future as we want to make modules to go into the module slot. But our first goal is to make this drone a true professional at sniffing down people in need. We are designing it to withstand cold temperatures and harsh weather, ensuring it can rapidly be deployed by catapult to scan mountains for victims stuck under an avalanche. It'll be able to do this all quicker than any search and rescue team on the ground would be able to find someone, as it will be flying at over 13 meters per second using its specifically designed low latency radio signal geo positioning system. It works by receiving an emergency beacon or potentially cell phone radio signal and reading the signal strength from four individual onboard antennas and after refining this data with filters and machine learning, you can calculate a reasonably accurate guess of where the signal is coming from. It will use its onboard GPS to compare the signal heading at multiple positions which allows for triangulation with only one drone. That way you can accurately find the exact coordinates of this radio signal. To ensure we don't miss any victims, we need to fly within close parameter of their radio beacon. Snow acts as a Faraday cage, as it's made out of water, and can block radio waves from coming through. The emergency radio beacons can be seen within 50 meter proximity. If the drone will fly in this zigzag pattern, the distance between each flight path determines how fast a drone can cover a large area. Any potential victim would have to be found and rescued within 10 minutes before they suffocate. So we need to maximize maximize the distance between each flight path to increase its searching speed, but if we have to be within 50 meters of every possible location, we need to fly as low as possible to decrease this distance in a vertical sense, as it's not useful. Our goal is to fly as low as 10 meters, which introduces the need of obstacle avoidance. But at this speed, an affordable LiDAR sensor will not allow for enough time to avoid the obstacle after detection, as it will only detect it at like 10 meters range. So we've come up with an innovative solution, which is stereo vision, which is highly based on our own eyes and our own depth perception. There will be two cheap cameras with a known distance in between the two, and then by comparing the position of a certain pixel on each camera, you can use the triangulation to find the distance of objects. With the electronics for this being cheaper than a regular LiDAR sensor, we will be able to detect objects at 50 meter distances with only a 2 centimeter inaccuracy. It can see things even even further away with more inaccuracy or things closer by with more accuracy. Welcome to engineering a UAV drone swarm without experience where today we will be discussing all of our progress in the last two months and some very very important announcements and after all of this progress and all of this research we are finally ready to start drawing out and building our first prototype. For those that don't know, I've been making weekly update videos on this project to give a realistic look into starting something so ambitious from scratch, without experience and at the age of 19. These videos have brought a lot of opportunities on my path, including two companies that are willing to help fund our first prototype, which I will get into later. But the videos are also responsible for getting competent volunteers that can do things much better than I can. However, after months of making these weekly videos, I did not upload for two months after the last video. The reason for this is that I realized that the time I've been spending on making these videos was a lot of time and I was taking away a lot of my potential work into the project itself. The second probably most important reason is that after week one of this two month period we already had everything thought out for what we had to do to build our first prototype. But we did not have enough funding yet and I needed to step back to find other ways of getting funding. 
The first two things I did for this was to reach out to PCBWay who have offered to let me use their services for free and they've told me that if I need a prototype build that they can make any of the required parts at no cost, limited by what they can do of course, so I cannot ask them for balsa wood parts because they don't do balsa wood, but they still do a lot of other stuff and it's going to be super helpful. The second thing is that I reached out to a previous sponsor called polyestershopa.nl and they're a Dutch web shop that sell all kinds of epoxies, carbon fiber, glass fiber and other materials and they have actually helped me before with testing out things with PU foam. They have agreed to send me the glass fiber I need to build the prototype as I want to make the wings and fuselage out of fiberglass for a seemingly perfect combination between cost, strength and weight. But of course this thing needed more than that so I worked my own ass off to afford the following items. Firstly I bought a motor, a 40 amp ES a receiver and controller bundle and a 7 amp hour 3S battery and this setup would theoretically allow for a 16 minute flight time and a 1.1 kilogram worth of thrust which should be enough to even lift 2 kilograms worth of drone, preferably a bit less though. So I ordered these parts off of Hobby King, which I did email to ask if they wanted to support the project by sending me these items as well, but sadly they left me on red. But despite that they offer really good value for the parts and I'm happy with what I got. So Hobby King, if you're watching this, I think this could still be a great collaboration for you as this will not be the last time that I'm gonna need parts like this. I wired everything up and it all works perfectly. The controller sadly uses a whole bucket worth of AA batteries, but the controller was so cheap it was like 30 bucks, so that's honestly fine. I then also ordered 10 9G servos from Timu because it's cheap and I wanna give web shops a go despite their public image. And actually they're really impressive. It was about 33% cheaper than on Amazon. It did not take very long to deliver. And every server I tested, so far at least, I tested 6 out of the 10, they all worked. The gears are all metal, it is compatible with the receiver, so I'm all happy to be honest. I also ordered some balsa wood from them as we want to use it for the frame and that was all good as well. Now there are still a few items that I'm yet to get funding for, which is the main carbon fiber tube and the two wing tubes, as well as many small things like screws for example. In order to get this funding, I have a few plans and also a few generic changes to this project and the YouTube channel that I would like to tell you about. Firstly, I will stop making generic weekly updates and I will instead be making more focused video on a specific project. The weekly update videos would end up being 40 minutes or something long, covering every single project we did something with. The issue with this is that not everyone enjoys software engineering and is interested in aerodynamics at the same time. So this leads to people clicking off unless they have a very broad interest in every single topic magically mentioned. So more focused videos would mean that I would, for example, take you along on our progress on the radio geopositioning software or on the stereo vision software and only talk about that. So I will be targeting software for engineers for that. So that means it has the potential to bring in specific people to volunteer for these topics. And people who will be clicking on this radio geopositioning software video title will get what they clicked for and nothing else. This would massively help this channel grow, meaning more potential for Navius to grow as a company as well. And I will still be making monthly videos though where I just like this video summarize all of our progress combined because this also helps myself grasp where we're at and what we need to do. And it's just probably pretty fun to see the progress, just not every week. The next change is that I want to start creating DIY kits, guides or literature or literature. That's a hard word to say, literature, which can be purchased from my Patreon. For example, to test the radio positioning system, I am making a handheld radio frequency analyzer, which I figured out a way to do this very cheaply. It would allow anyone to listen to a broad spectrum of radio signals, including the creepy Russian buzzer. But this thing would also be capable of acting as a blue eye, which essentially detects the presence of emergency services, including police, which people for some reason reason put into their car. I, I would not know why. <clears throat> and um, 
And I also don't know why, but these blue eye things are like $1,800 when my $70 to $80 kit can do all of it and more. So if I make a YouTube video about this analyzer specifically, it'll target the right people that are interested in this analyzer. I will show how it works. And if I think what I'm doing in a video is interesting for people, I will create a parts list and a detailed video guide on how to build it yourself. I think this could be a great way to support a project like this because you would actually be getting something of value in return whilst also donating to a good cause like this. I also changed my Patreon up slightly with more option to just donate, allowing for lower and higher amounts than previously. I added a nice image and title to grasp what you're donating and how much you're helping out because each option correlates to a certain part required for the prototype or finished UAV. I would like to ask anyone who's watching this to have a look at that as your donation would genuinely someday probably save a life. The final change I would like to announce has to do with management. Since like forever I had difficulty managing this large amount of volunteers and it is just so hard when you can't have any reliable expectations from people that work for free and when you don't have experience managing anything at all in the past. However, I did realize that I should put more effort into this skill and ensure that my job here in Avius is to make everything run smoothly, delegate tasks, make strategic decisions, and make YouTube videos to spread awareness of this project. This is a large task and a whole job in of itself, but either way, it doesn't make sense for me to engineer things myself when there are people that can do it much better and much quicker that have signed up to do it for free. It just feels odd to ask people to do things, but I would just do it because it is the most efficient way for Navius to run and I need to learn it anyways. I mean, these people, they signed up for it, so it's not weird to ask them to do something. To solve a lot of the issues that we previously had in terms of managing this amount of people, I came up with a whole new system, which I will be creating in the next video. All in all, guys, a lot of stuff is happening and I'm super excited to make content again and to save lives with this cool initiative. If you think you would enjoy this content, please be sure to subscribe, like, and leave a comment. This would allow for YouTube to push these videos to more people. And I guess you could say that liking this video could also save a life. And I don't want to guilt trip anyone here, but, but you know what to do. You don't want to not like, you know? You know what I'm saying? All right, see you guys.